Welcome back to the channel, guys. This is Living in Temecula Valley, California, and today we're gonna to be talking about the seven things you need to know before moving to the Temecula Valley. So let's go ahead and jump in. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is Jake Karasi. I'm a local realtor here in Temecula Valley. And if this is your first time to the channel, living in Temecula Valley, California, please make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and bell notification to get notified every time that I release a video. I'm gonna be releasing videos every week for you guys. That being said, uh, if you guys need any help in the real estate world, I am a licensed realtor here. Feel free to call or text the number on your screen, or you can email me as well. Let me know how I can help. So let's go ahead and jump into the seven things you need to know before moving to the Temecula Valley, starting with number seven, wineries. And here we are at a winery. This is Wilson Creek Winery. I came up into the vineyard here just to uh, get some quiet because there's, I don't know if you can hear, but there's a ton of people down there having a good time today, Saturday. Uh, so they have live music and just a ton of people down there. The wineries are kind of a way of life up here in Temecula. It's what we're known for. And so we have almost 50 wineries here in the Temecula Valley. Most of them out here on the east side on Rancho California Road. Um, a lot of them are bigger, about 10 or 12 are pretty big. Wilson Creek, Ponte, uh, Callaway, a lot of bigger wineries. There's also a whole bunch of smaller kind of mom and pop wineries too. Great wine as well. Uh, we have over 5,000 domestic and international awards for the grapes and wines produced here in the Temecula Valley because the climate is perfect, the soil is perfect. It's just a great place to grow wine grapes. Uh, but the wineries are not all about the wine. They're also about uh, just having a good time on the weekends, especially at these bigger ones where they also have restaurants. They also have concerts a lot of times, musicians, live musicians, uh, all kinds of stuff happening at the wineries. And some are even family friendly, believe it or not. So Wilson Creek is one that uh, I bring my family to. A lot of kids running around just having a good time. Number six we're going to talk about in the Temecula Valley is the top rated schools. So Temecula is also known for its great schools schools. In fact, uh, greatschools.org, uh, which is a great website I send my clients to to check out the local schools, ranks Temecula schools at eights, nines, and even 10 out of 10s uh, for its elementary, junior, and high schools, a lot of the bigger ones. There's a ton of schools up here, but the best ones are all ranked in the very top. Marietta is not far behind with eights and nines. Um, you know, Menifee, uh, Wildemar, they all have fairly highly ranked schools, sevens and eights. Temecula is the best though. So if you're looking for a place that has high rated schools you can't go wrong with him at uh, Temecula Valley so that brings us to number five which is traffic now you need to know about traffic if you're gonna move to the Temecula Valley it's probably not as bad as you've heard though so a lot of times the only traffic we have is gonna be rush hour morning and evening it can back up for an hour or two uh, especially if there's an accident but most of the day it's not really that bad and the weekends are not that bad unless it's a holiday weekend what I tell clients who are thinking of moving here if you want to know how the traffic's gonna look all you have to do is look at Google Maps check out from wherever you work to Temecula as a destination or reverse it and see during the rush hour what it's going to actually add to your commute and check for a few different days because it does vary a little bit. So traffic's not as bad as you think it is. Most people who live here know to take surface roads during rush hour and you can get around just fine. So that brings us to number four, which is going to be Pechanga Casino. Now, Pechanga, depending on whose website you read, is either the largest or second largest casino on the West Coast. Uh, the one that could be a little bigger than it is, um, used to be called San Manuel. It's now called uh, Yamava Casino. It's uh, less than an hour from here, but uh, Pechanga is huge. They just underwent a two year, $300 million expansion, and they've added all kinds of stuff, more gaming, uh, pools, everything you can imagine. But the $300 million expansion, they just finished it recently. They now have over 300,000 feet of gaming space, 123 tables, 6,500 slot machines, 40,000 foot uh, event center for uh, concerts. They actually have a lot of headliners out there too. They're constantly having concerts there. Uh, tons of stuff to do. A four and a half acre tropical pool complex with three different pools, two water slides, a swim up bar, 27 cabanas, uh, and a partridge in a pear tree. They have everything in the world out there. It's a great spot. They also have a huge spa. If you're into that, you can take the wife out for a little spa day. Um, tons of restaurants also. They've got uh, everything you can imagine. Steakhouse, sushi, Italian, Chinese, Thai, American, 
American food, everything in between. There's 11 restaurants actually. And one of our favorite things to do there at Pechanga is the comedy club and uh, the nightclub. They have a nightclub where you can go dancing, or it used to be anyway, we haven't been in a while, but they do do the nightclub, they have the comedy club. They have some pretty funny people there too. Definitely recommend, so check it out if you're in town. And so that brings us to number three thing you need to know before moving to Temecula, and that is the weather, the heat. So you've probably heard Temecula is a little hotter, and it is, it's a little hotter. It's pretty warm today, but it was only, I think, in the high 80s. Uh, we just went through a heat spell, but typically in the summertime, it's gonna be in the 90s. It's about five to seven degrees on average higher than North County, San Diego. So as you go through the pass, heading north on the 15 freeway, you get past the border patrol station they have right there, past Fallbrook into the Temecula Valley as you come through the, the mountains there, you're gonna feel it get about five to seven, sometimes more degrees hotter than where you just were. But the good news is it also is way drier. There's no humidity hardly at all up here. Very, very rarely do we feel any humidity. So it's a very dry heat. And if you know anything about humid heat versus dry heat, you know that the dry heat is always gonna be way better than the humid heat. Uh, so I grew up in Fallbrook uh, and Bonzel, just south of here. Uh, it's going to be pretty humid there in the summertime, sometimes up here very, very rarely. So it's a very tolerable heat. And that's going to bring us to number two, which is Old Town Temecula. Now, this is one of our favorite places to go, my wife and I. So much to do in Old Town. And just a little bit about Old Town, um, Temecula was founded in 1859. And I didn't realize until recently that Temecula has more uh, historical buildings than any town in Southern California. So there's quite a few uh, historical buildings. There's a museum, a lot of old stuff to check out, but that's not why we go to Old Town. We go to Old Town because there's lots of stuff to do. There's shopping, tons of great restaurants. There's nightlife, dancing. There's even a brewery and uh, there's a speakeasy too. I'm gonna include another video in the future about just things that are in Old Town that are amazing to check out. Definitely needs to be in the top of your list if you're coming up here. And it's great to uh, spend some time there with the family during the day, go out and do a little adult time at night. A lot of fun out there. And that brings us to the number one thing you need to know about the Temecula Valley before moving here, and that is the affordability. Now, if you're coming from another state, it might not seem that affordable, honestly. It's gonna be Southern California prices still, so it's pretty high compared to most other states. But compared to the counties that are right around us, San Diego County, LA County, Orange County, we are way more affordable on average. So just to give you a little idea, the median price as of right now in Temecula for a single family detached home is, and this is a closed price, so a house that just sold, the median is gonna be 697,000. Uh, in Marietta, it's gonna be 636,000. Uh, in Wildemar, 622,000. Min uh, Winchester is gonna be 610,000. And Menifee is 553,000. So you're right around the half a million mark and a little higher. Um, and there's tons of houses under those prices, obviously. I just looked this morning in the MLS, there's 20 houses under $600,000 in Temecula available right now uh, and those are not manufactured homes those are not condos those are you know single family detached homes in great shape uh, but the medians are right there around uh, 700 thousand in Temecula. But when you compare that to the, the counties that surround us you're looking at about 968,000 in San Diego County. 950,000 in LA County and 988,000 in Orange County. And that's median. You know, obviously you can find lots of homes over one, two, three million out there. Over here, a lot more affordable comparatively. You know, in most areas in Temecula, you're also gonna get a much newer house because most housing out here wasn't built until the late eighties. It's rare to find a house for sale that was built before 1986 in the Temecula Valley. Almost everything was after 86, 87. There was a bunch of building booms back then. And so most of the housing here is pretty new comparatively. If you go down to San Diego and you're looking for a house, you're gonna see houses in the 50s, 60s, and it's it's been built up for quite a lot longer than the Temecula Valley. So most of the houses up here are quite a lot newer. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That is the seven things you need to know before moving to the Temecula Valley. I'm gonna make another video with seven more things coming up. There's a lot to know, a lot to do out here. That's just the top seven things that came to mind. If you guys think of something else that you would like me to add to the next video, put it in the comments below or something you think I missed and I'll make sure to add that to the list. So once again, my name is Jake Karasi here with Signature Real Estate Group. Uh, right here in the Temecula Valley, I am a local realtor. If there's anything in the world I can do for you, please make sure to reach out. This number 
number on the screen is my phone. You can call, text. You can also email if you like. Let me know how I can help and I'm always available for you guys. So that being said, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on the next video.